South Korea, an amazing and dynamically developing country, is in a rather complicated geopolitical environment. On one hand, there's a hostile nuclear-armed neighbor to the north. On the other hand, there's powerful communist China, which has enormous influence on the world. Nor should we forget about Japan, with which the republic's relations have always been strained. In such a complicated situation, one cannot rely solely on allies, with the United States being the first among them. It's necessary to constantly build up the capacity of your own air force, and above all, timely renewal of the aviation fleet. Incidentally, it's quite interesting here. The country's arms are composed mainly of Americans, including the vigorous Fighting Falcon, F-16, and the Tiger II, F-5, and Phantom F-4, which have been flying since the late 1950s. Realizing how important it is not to only have the latest aviation innovations, but also to be able to develop them, South Korea decided to create a fighter that meets modern requirements. And although the Republic previously had no experience in building a fourth-generation aircraft, it has stepped quite confidently on this path. Today, we'll talk about how successful the KFX program was, how quickly it was implemented, and what awaits the Korean aircraft in the next decade. This is Military News. Let's go! The KFX, or Borame, meaning Young Hawk, is a joint project between South Korea and Indonesia to develop a multi-role Generation 4 Plus fighter. It was initiated by Seoul, which announced its ambitious plans back in 2001. It was only 10 years later that Jakarta joined it. The main developer was Korea Aerospace Industries, with the assistance of Indonesian Aerospace. It's worth noting that since the 1990s, KAI, together with Lockheed Martin Corporation, has been working on a supersonic Burka trainer aircraft, KAI T-50 Golden Eagle, which will come in handy in the new program. Like Japan, South Korea was in talks with the United States about transferring technology for an advanced fighter jet. However, this country was interested in the F-35. Ultimately, in 2016, America decided not to take such a risky step. This refusal forced Korean engineers to speed up the design phase and after only two years begin to implement the blueprints. The plans were truly grandiose. The presentation of the prototype took place in April of this year. By January, it's planned to present two more airships, and next year the first flight tests were performed. The serial production of the airship is to start in 2026. In seven years, it's to reach the quantity of 120 battle units, which frankly is hard to believe. Looking at these specifications, we should start with the dimensions. The KFX is somewhere between the Eurofighter Typhoon and the F-35. The fighter is 17 meters long, 55 feet 5 inches, and has a wingspan of 11.5 meters, 36 feet 9 inches. In terms of aerodynamic layout, it's almost a complete copy of the F-22. I should note that the model was developed at once in single and double seat versions. Foreign companies actively participate in the creation of the Borame. The British company Martin Baker supplies ejection seats to South Korea. American company Techstars produces transparent film for the lantern and windshield for the aircraft resistant to the bird strike. And Triumph Group will design and produce a power distribution system for the generator, engine pump, and other systems for the Korean aircraft. As for the KFX's low visibility, there was one dilemma. Despite the use of stealth technology, the first models, being developed until 2028, do not have internal weapon compartments, which means that all missiles will have to be carried on external suspension points. This automatically makes the aircraft visible to enemy radar. It's planned that in the future, KAI designers will still manage to place the armament inside. It was assumed that some of the components would be supplied from abroad, including a modern radar with AFAR made in the USA. However, the United States not only did not offer its radar, but also refused to assist in the development of the Korean radar. Seoul had alternative options for purchasing radars. The Swedish company Saab, the European company Selex Fin Mechanica, and Israel Aerospace Industries offered their services. But the Republic took the thorniest path and decided to equip the aircraft with its radar. Hanwha Systems, a local company, is in charge of its development. The radar with an active phased array will have about 1,200 to 1,300 receiving and transmitting modules. 
For comparison, the American Analog installed on the F-22 has 2,000 of them, and the radar on the F-35 has 1,200. This radar is capable of operating in various modes and track a target at a distance of 200 kilometers. In terms of capabilities, it should surpass even the AN-APG-83 installed on upgraded KF-16V combat aircraft. Korea was able to test its novelty together with the Israeli company Elta Systems. By November 2019, 16 airborne tests had been conducted, 10 of which took place abroad. I should add that the same domestic company was also developing the Optronic Sighting Module and the Infrared Detection and Tracking Station, ERST. As stated earlier, the Boramay does not have internal weapon suspension points, which are needed to reduce visibility. For this reason, it falls just a little short of the fifth generation. On its external hardpoints, the KFX will be able to carry up to 10 air-to-air -air or air-to-ground missiles, the main one being the very powerful MBDA Meteor. It has an active radar homing head and is capable of hitting a target at a distance of 100 kilometers at Mach 4. In addition, among the missiles used could be Iris-T or Taurus KEPD-350 cruise missile. It is not excluded the probability that Seoul will improve its relations with Washington and will see the good old AIM-120 and AIM-9X on the fighter. The prototype of our fighter was equipped with only one engine, like the FA-50 Golden Eagle. However, this idea was quickly abandoned. Now we decided on a twin-engine variant. What exactly the power plant will be on the KFX is still a mystery. It's known that a few years ago, the Republic was choosing between the classic General Electric F-414 and Eurojet EJ-200 installed on the Eurofighter Typhoon. But in favor of which was the final choice is still unknown. According to the statement of designers, the aircraft will be able to reach speeds of Mach 1.8 and a range of 2.9 thousand kilometers without additional fuel tanks. It's worth saying separately about the fabulous price of this project. More than $8 billion have already been spent on the development of the Boramé. Each Korean fighter will cost the military $110 million. Funding for the program, which is mainly a responsibility of South Korea, will cover 80% of the costs. The remaining 20% must be paid by Pakistan, which often fails to pay on time. This state of affairs has even sparked rumors that Jakarta plans to withdraw from the program, Information about the return of Indonesian engineers to their home country, as if because of COVID-19, only strengthened it. Soon, however, all the engineers returned and the rumors were disproved. Today, the country is still interested in acquiring the KFX. Taking a closer look at the KFX, one has only one question to ask. Why? Why create such an expensive project if the fifth-generation machines are already taking to the skies and America and China are even talking about the sixth generation? After all, by the time the fighter is completed, it'll be obsolete. The history of the KFX shows how complex, costly, and risky the idea of building a winged machine can be. And although the Boramé has good characteristics, a powerful radar, increased combat range, 50% more than the F-16, and longer service life, it still has serious competitors a generation older. So we can assess its capabilities only in a few years when the fighter enters the armed forces of the partner countries. And as always, give us your likes, share your opinions in the comments, and don't forget to subscribe. See you soon.